So I'll admit, for the longest while, I was having a hard time trying to find an angle to want to do this case. After all, the law on it seemed pretty straightforward for Mr. Barnes. AMC hasn't had its shareholder meeting in the required time under Delaware law, and he wants to compel them to do the shareholder meeting that they're supposed to do annually. It seems, you know, pretty open shut, so it's really hard to do a legal video on it because here we are 30 seconds in and I've pretty much given you the synopsis of it. Well, the basic synopsis of it. There's a little bit more underlying it that we'll get to here in a second. No, what's been far more interesting for me is the social dynamic surrounding this lawsuit. When it first came out, all the objectors didn't read past the headline, they just saw an AMC lawsuit and was immediately cheering on the litigation. Yeah, go get Adam Aaron, you got him. Stick it to the company for not holding a shareholders meeting. And of course you had the people who were in favor of settlement, didn't want the original underlying AMC shareholder litigation going, boo, another bullshit lawsuit. This is all frivolous. Who's or orchestrating this? There's gotta be some nefarious person behind it some hedge fund or someone trying to screw with AMC and Adam Aaron, and they too did not read past the headline. Then, as soon as it came out that Mr. Barnes had previously gone to the SEC to try and hurry along the process of the AMC Ape conversion and got told by the SEC in now public SEC documents that, you know, AMC is going ahead with this, we don't need to get involved at this point, but thanks for your concern. Uh, it became pretty clear that this guy uh, was not in the box everyone was drawing him into and quickly all the objectors were cussing and screaming about him and the amount of shares he had and how clearly that he's not a real shareholder because of how few shares he owns and the other side that had been cussing and cursing his name was now cheering him and the side that had been cursing him and shouting down his name before as some hedge fund plant out to screw Adam Aaron and AMC suddenly embraced him with warming arms. Guys, this is also why I don't rush out and do videos on litigation like this. You guys got to read past the headline and stop getting all worked up until you know all the facts or know what the situation is. And second of all, beyond this, I really hate this idea that shareholders who enact their shareholder rights either through litigation or compelling the company to do what it's supposed to do is somehow inherently bad. This, like, there's one thing I do like about the uh, meme stock movement, and that is this sort of civic duty that shareholders in the meme stock community have towards the company in which they participate in. They're actively involved and they want to participate even though shareholders have a very limited avenue to participate in. But in the same token, you guys are a little too much extreme and might I say a little cultish when it comes to your preferred stock of choice. More so, this whole argument about how someone's not a real shareholder unless they have enough shares to qualify for whoever's speaking at the time I hate to be a softy moralist here, but to quote Mr. Deeds. Well, unfortunately for you, I bought one share of Blake Media this morning. You told me every stockholder has a say in this company, even the little guy. Now, of course, I'm not just here to moralize to you. I'm here because there's things that have actually changed in the case that are of note. In fact, things that happened last week on the 1st of August. Kevin Barnes' counsel filed a letter with Vice Chancellor Zern complaining about how the defendant's counsel could not come to an agreement with them as to the scheduling of the litigation as it should proceed. They proposed a litigation schedule that would have AMC file its answer to the complaint on July 31st, which whoops, by the time this letter happened, that had passed, which is probably why they are now going before the court. And then on August 3rd, they would have a motion for summary judgment, and then August 7th would be your opposition, and then a hearing on the merits for both sides on August 10th to 11th. In response, AMC suggested the dates of the answer to the complaint on August 11th as the deadline, the week of August the 14th being the motion for summary judgment, September 15th as the response and opposition deadline for the summary judgment, and then September 20th 
and the 22nd for the hearing. Of course, plaintiff's counsel argues that this is a pretty straightforward case, which it is, and that this should just go ahead on a pretty expedited timeline like they've already agreed to. That same day, defense counsel for AMC responded to the letter, and their argument was pretty simple. Regardless of how straightforward the Section 211 action is, they should have the full time to be able to brief, and it's not uncommon for cases to take the time schedule that they suggested. In fact, Genzer v. Rocky Mountain Chocolate Factory Incorporated was a case that Chancery Daily had cited in her article about this that goes into a lot more detail as to the case precedent for these sort of Section 211 actions that you should take the time to read if you want to understand this case a little better. Now there has been quite a bit of commentary on the more or less loophole around the current shareholder litigation that is provided by this lawsuit vis-a-vis -vis the new amendment to the Delaware General Corporate Law with the uh, tweaking of 242 to add 242D. With this sort of end round, the current litigation and settlement, AMC could technically just go ahead, have a shareholder meeting, go through the normal shareholder things, and oh, we have this proposal here to reaffirm the vote that we did back in March under the new 242D rules. So you'd think that AMC wouldn't oppose this at all. In fact, would say, oopsies are bad. Yeah, let's go ahead and do this and we'll deal with lawyer fees, whatever. Let's, let's move this down. After all, this was all approved at the beginning of the month back in August. So there has to be something else going on here. Like maybe I'm missing it because I'm not a lawyer and I'm not a legal expert. But I've also confirmed with chance that it's not because of the status quo order. The status quo order has no effect on them going ahead and having a meeting and then voting under 242D. So I, a mystery that we will all get to solve in the intermeeting days while we wait for the settlement to come through on the other litigation. But that's all I have for right now, just a brief catch up on the Barnes litigation for the AMC shareholder meeting. Until next time, I'll catch you all later.